Minnesota Timberwolves, 26 and 10, 12 and 8 on the road at the Boston Celtics, 28 and 8, 17 and 0 at home. Still got that goose egg at home where TD Garden, Boston, Massachusetts, Minnesota playing at a 26 ranked pace over the last five games, uh, just two and three over that period, 96.90. Uh, possessions game Boston three and two over the last five playing the pace 103.50 possessions game that's third fastest in the NBA uh Dan Kelly said just what the one where Barrett made a three to take the lead and they said Siakam set an illegal pick that call was disgusting yeah it was um uh it was an, uh, very 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 aggravating but uh seeing how angry it got other people like Darko allowed me to not lose my mind uh over it but uh, but let's go. Uh, let's get right to work here in NBA. Let me just move my information over to NBA so we can uh, break this all down. Dutch will be joining us shortly. Uh, but for now, let's work together and let's get that cash. These teams with the best records in the NBA are meeting here. Timberwolves, Boston, Celtics. First off, we'll take a look at the line history. And there's been a big move towards Boston. Boston sitting here at minus eight and a half. Uh, opened up at eight, got down to seven and a half, up to eight and a half. We see nines everywhere else, but here we have the eight and a half. Uh, let's take a look at the expected uh, injury report here. Move over here, and here we go. Uh, Holiday, Horford, and uh, Porzingis are game time decisions. Uh, Minnesota, a healthy group right now. You have to think that everybody's in. We're right around um, the time where we would get that information. You have to think that everybody is in. A nasty Nate says Celtics second quarter. And Razor Sharp picks Gambler's first glance is Clemson minus two. Clemson minus two versus Virginia Tech. Makes sense with the bounce back spot, doesn't it? Uh, Razor Sharp picks in Clemson minus two. We've heard from Taint. Oh, it's all good, uh, Kong, my man. Don't don't think twice. Don't worry your your money in the bank, buddy. Uh, all good. Uh, so. Gambler's first glance is in, and it is Clemson to bounce back after that 5.6% performance from three from our razor sharp picks. So we see this move towards the Celtics opening of eight at nine at other books, eight and a half here. Let's take a look at the total from a total scenario. We're back to pinnacles moves sitting at 224. This open minus 106 to the over now minus 103. So almost no movement here on the total. Let's get into the cash flow for this one. We have 75% of the tickets, 74% of the cash on the Celtics, a line moving in their direction. You have 19% of the tickets and 96% of the cash on the under. 96% of cash on the under, and the line is not moving. Strange. Uh, the Timberwolves are on the second half of a back-to-back after their second win in three games last night, 113-92 at Orlando. Yeah, you must imagine that maybe somebody is going to be out of the lineup here. A uh, cat put up 28. Rudy Gobert put up 21 and 12. Wolves limited the magic to just 36.2% from the field and held Orlando to just 37 points in the second half. Their defense has stepped up uh, throughout the season. Celtics had their two game winning streak snapped in a 133 131 loss at the Pacers on Monday. You can imagine they are an angry group. It was a controversial final offensive play for the Celtics. Uh, that Jalen Brown was involved in. He still went for a season-high 40. Tatum didn't play due to an ankle injury, but Tatum will be in the lineup here this evening. And this is game one of a back-to-back. -back. They travel to Milwaukee for game two tomorrow night. And this will be the second meeting between these two teams. Uh, Ant put up 38, and Minnesota took care of business at home, 114-109 in overtime the first time these teams met. This is game one of 10. Uh, let's bring on your expert here for Wednesdays on betting with the bag in NBA. Uh, coming to us from Las Vegas, Nevada. He's also the star of our All About the Hoops live betting show this evening. Please welcome Mr. Dutch Boy. <laughs> Dutchie, what's good, man? How are you? Jimmy the motherfucking bag, my guy. Sorry about being a little late. Oh, it's all you good. know, the NBA is a hell of a drug. 
Hey, you're looking at the plug. Yeah, man. Good to be with you. Phone died. Everything was fucked up for me this morning, but I'm here. All right. You are in business, and timing is all good. We're ready to roll. So a very interesting situation here. Uh, we have uh, Kong's clip saying that he imagines that Boston will be uh, more concerned with what's happening tomorrow night. Uh, this is the first of a back-to-back, -back, but the market certainly doesn't say that. Market says Celtics smash and grab here. Uh, interesting. We've seen the struggles of teams on the first half of a back-to-back -back where they've really shone on the second half. Uh, take it away here. A very interested in your breakdown. Timberwolves, Celtics. Yeah, man. I was really liking this game at minus six. Shout out to our guy, Jay Mack, in the chassis. He, he got the six last night. Um, you know, these boys, you touched on a lot. You touched on it yesterday. Um, a lot of people were on Orlando. I just felt it. I just felt like, man, people say that the Minnesota looking for looking ahead to Boston. I looked at it the other way, Jim. I said, nah, they better win today because they got to play Boston tomorrow. That's the way I looked at it. Plus, I felt like Orlando had kind of went through a lot of tough games there in a row. So they handled business yesterday like I expected. Um, and I would look for the Celtics here to bounce back um, after kind of a controversial uh, controversial loss to the Indiana Pacers, 131-133 there. Um, you know, not many times can I say this because you don't really hear me bitching about fouls and shit, but uh, JB definitely got fouled on that last play. We cast a three and a half with C-Mac. Shout out to Connor Mack. We had the Pacers plus three and a half. Um, you know, it was good money either way, but they won outright. But JB did get, I mean, he got hit in the head on that last foul. So I don't know how they called it a foul. Then they overturned it. I mean, it was a foul. It was a foul and I'm, uh, I'm on the other side. So, um, you know, maybe look for them to be a little angry after feeling like they got robbed in Indiana and Minnesota beat this team early in the season, November 6th in Minnesota, as Boston was a three point favorite. The thing that does look at me a little bit, though, is obviously this is the East West matchup, Jim, and Boston does have, you know, Milwaukee on deck tomorrow. So think, take that for what you will. I still thought the six was pretty solid. Um, now we're getting up there, though, with nine, 17 and oh, straight up last 17 games, Boston is in Beantown. So they handle business on their home court. They're 10 and oh, last 10 meetings against the number at home versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. And the Timberwolves have came back to reality a little bit of lately, Jim. Uh, nice win last night, but they're 2-6 and six against the number last eight. Had lost three of the last four. And they are 3-11 last 14 versus the Boston Celtics against the number. I'm on the Celtics here, but I'm not going to make it official at nine. It just I can't do that. Um, I think they route them, though. If you're looking for – I don't think – you know, I think first quarter, first half, even with it, the back-to-back -back situation, Boston's a pretty good team. Um, first quarter overall gets the spread. If you want to dummy it down, maybe take them early. Um, but I think Boston comes out ready to rock and roll. I think Tatum will be back in the lineup um, and, and, a little, and a little pissed off from that trip to Indiana. Yeah, uh, this is a pretty – even the line opening at this number is a pretty blatant statement that uh, the Celtics are going to take care of business and bounce back from that earlier loss to the Timberwolves, bounce back from the uh, the – Controversial call on Brown. Interesting. And then on our last show on Friday, LJ had Celtics first half, and I think they were up 30 at the break. It was just uh, dominance here. Mike says grab the over. I guess uh, Celtics early. Will I think I'm just too late to the party here. I'll leave some question marks uh, by it. But uh, And what do you have in your pocket? You got Celtics minus six or six and a half? Yeah, I got a six minus 120. Um, and, and North Ender, shout out to North Ender. Um, you know, the rest can't call, they can do whatever they can call. But when you call a foul and it goes to review and it gets overturned, that's when it's what the fuss going on here. I mean, I, I don't know what did, did you think that was a foul, Jim? Did you see it? I well, I saw it after the fact. Uh, I saw it after the fact, and yeah, I mean, uh, it he hit him in the back of the head. Like, <laughs> the fact that they looked, you know, whether or not you call that on the floor. Right. That could That's be, different story. Yeah, yeah, but the fact that they looked at it and overruled it was fucking dicey, dude. Pretty fucking crazy. It's like, it's almost takes you to Detroit type of shit, you know, like back in Dallas. Like, what the fuck's going on here? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, it's a problem. It's a big, big problem that we have to deal with uh, right now with, with sports and, and, and with sports gambling are these calls that are not justified. But let's roll on. Uh, let's roll on. Next up, 
for us, Sacramento Kings, 22 and 14, 9, 7 on the road. Charlotte Hornets, 8 and 26, 4 and 12, a home at Spectrum Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. Dan Kelly's already told us Sacramento playing their sixth game in nine nights. They're on the second half of back to back after their third win in four games last night, 131, 119 at the Pistons. That game was just nuts. Uh, <laughs> Pistons get off the early lead. They're, they're the best fade in the history of sports uh, right now. And, uh, that first quarter, though, huh? Ugh, wild. Uh, Sabonis went for 37. Keegan went for 32. And that began a five-game road trip for the Kings. So they begin their five-game road trip, and now uh, they play this Hornets team. is coming off their 13th loss in 14 games, 119-112 in overtime at home with the Bulls on Monday. Rozier goes for 39. Uh, the only time Charlotte's won in the last month was at Sacramento on January 2nd. They won 111-104, and Rozier won for 34 in that one. Brandon Miller playing through an illness uh, right now. This one is... Uh... This one is – I just wish that wasn't the case. I wish Charlotte hadn't have gone into Sacramento and beat them. Uh, it would be real easy for me to get involved with Charlotte here if that wasn't the case. Uh, this total opened up at 234. It's dropped all the way down to 230 and a half. Big move towards the under. Then we have these Sacramento Kings as seven-and-a-half point road favorites. Uh, they opened up at seven. They're now seven and a half. We have a half point move towards them. Dan Kelly got Charlotte plus eight last night. He says the way I will play it is when Charlotte gets a lead, I will get on the other side and root for the middle. Let's go over to the cash flow then for this spot. Cash flow. Oh, so I'm going to pull this up here. Uh, cash flow wise, we have God, come on. Uh, we have no information on the total. Uh, well, we have the ticket count. 87% of tickets on the under. We've watched the drop three and a half points. So I, I shouldn't say no information, but no cash flow information. Then you have 40% of the tickets and 90% of the cash on the Charlotte Hornets, 40 and 90. And yet the lines moved a half point towards Sacramento, which is very tricky to fully uh, grasp and understand. Sacramento playing 16th fastest pace over their past five games, 100.13 possessions a game. Charlotte playing really slow, 95.31 possessions a game, good for 28th in the NBA, one and four over that period. Take it away for us here, Dutch Kings, Hornets, and Charlotte. Yeah, man. Shout out to our guy, ready to start picks in the Billy. I see DK with the eight. Um, I'm liking where Lucky left he's at, though. I like it. Lucky lefty 211. Uh, shout out to our guy. I, I like that uh, Kings first half look. I mean, I honestly kind of think first quarter too. But after what you seen last night with the with the Pistons getting down by fifteen in that first quarter, uh, maybe the first half's a little. Maybe they let the Kings settle down a little bit. Uh, but I don't like Charlotte here. I really don't. The Kings have lost two straight meetings to these boys. Uh, most recently, January second, seven point loss at home in Sacktown. They were they opened as a sixteen and a half point favorite in that game, Jim. Cover uh close that 15 and a half point favorite, lose outright at the crib. Now you go back a week later. It was all good just a week ago. Well shit. They just should go into Charlotte pretty fucking pissed off. And we know the Hornets um, you know, can lay the fuck down for goddamn near anybody. But you know, they, they do have Rozier, they do have some guys that are gonna come out there and compete. But overall, there's levels to this shit. And the Sacramento Kings are on a whole nother motherfucking level. Um, and you get them. Yeah, you could say in the back-to-back -back situation, Jim, but they was damn near on cruise control after that first quarter, um, especially after the halftime. In the fourth quarter, Detroit did cut it a little bit, but, um, you know, Sacramento did what they did and, and went away with it. Um, they are 2-8. and eight. There's something about these Hornets, though, you know, against the Sacramento Kings. 2-8 and eight ATS last 10 versus the Hornets and 1-5 and five straight up last 6 in Charlotte. Now, we know De'Aaron Fox – you know, uh, you know, um, is going to get whatever he wants to have absolutely nothing for him. Um, I think Savonis ha has a really good matchup in this as well. Uh, PJ Washington, anyone down there is just too fucking too slow, too small for this boy. Um, but the numbers, you know, don't lie that that Charlotte plays him well. So DK could be on something with the full game eight. Um, haven't went to the window here with it, but so I, I want to be on Sacramento first half here. Um, I just. Just not like too really too excited, overly excited of what I've seen out of the Sacramento Kings the last mm, six, seven basketball games, Jim. They, I don't know. It's just I don't. They're, they're, they brought um, uh, they're bringing Herder off the bench now. He's going to start now. They're kind of missing with the rotation a little bit. To, um, I, I think they're trying to figure it out. I think Brown's trying to figure it out a little bit after kind of a, a early hiccup here going because they started off nice. 
Um, so I would only look Sacramento here, and I think it is a Sacramento spot after losing as 15.5-point favorites on their home court to this basketball team less than a week ago. But it'd have to be first half. And uh, what's the best number you can get first half on here, Joe? Uh, My phone's look. dead. I can't look at shit. You know, I can understand your trepidation. If there was not – if 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 there hadn't have been Charlotte's win in Sacramento, I'd be on Charlotte without a doubt. I know you would uh, be. <laughs> but – but – in my ROI was Charlotte over the last year and a half is negative. So don't don't get no one should be excited when I like Charlotte. Uh, this is sitting at four right now, four across the board. Yeah, four first half. Yeah, I'm gonna hold off on that. I, I do I do like it though. I do think uh, Sacramento comes out early. We got a we got a, some decent games. I might make that official now. We'll see. Um, I'm just a little upset I couldn't get Boston on the card. You know, had a had a mediocre. I believe it was three and three last week here on the show, Jim. And the late addition of the Phoenix Suns costed us a day in the black. So very frustrating when you make a late addition and it costs you a profit. Uh, you're running nice. Uh, you know, you're, you're running nice here. 27 and 21 on the show. And that's with leaving three spots that would have been winners uh, off. So you could be 30 and 21. So you're you're running nice here. So you have nothing nothing to worry about. What you've been delivering 56.3 percent ROI is 7.92 percent. That's very impressive. With when Dutch comes on, he gives you out action that you can bet right now, and that puts you guys, you know, in a really tough spot. So you've been very impressive. Let's roll on. Uh, let's roll on. Next up for us, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern San Antonio Spurs 5 and 33 and 15 on the road at Detroit Pistons 3 and 34, 2 and 15 at home. Have we ever had a matchup? with two teams with worse records. These teams combined have won three times in their last 64 games. I mean, that's just, that, that's, that's fucking bad. I, you know, there was always a concern and there was a huge concern <laughs> in baseball with these teams, uh, you know, believing that they have to be the worst to be the best. And I think that's what you have to do when you, you have a team that's, you know, in this mediocre, uh, you're not going to get the number one overall picks, you know, uh, Again, I got really frustrated last week when we talked about the Raptors and how we could only, if we got number one overall pick, we'd only have them for their rookie contract and then they'd want to go back to the States. Uh, but uh, here we have so many teams following this process, which makes sense if the fan base can handle it. Uh, these teams are playing. It. It's, it sucks. It and does. then, after Denver Broncos, mediocre, man. It's, it's fucking not a nice place to be. No, God, Vancouver Canucks. I know. Well, now we're playing well, but. We should, we could imagine the, I don't know, I won't get into it, but here also Detroit had the chance to be in the best position of all. They could have got the number one overall pick. They fell to five last year. Uh, so they don't get Wemby. Uh, the Spurs get Wemby and, and build around Wemby. Justin McKelvey on Wembenyama over two and a half blocks at minus 135 says when I bet it, now it's minus 186. Okay, let's break this one down here. Both playing at a very similar pace. 101.6 possessions game for over the past five for the Spurs. 101.39 for the Pistons. That's 12, 10th and 12th, respectively. We're at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. Let's get into the line history here for this one. And I love bum fights. I don't care what the record is. I just uh, – that this this always, for whatever reason, I – I think I that if, if, if the gambling public shies away from these spots, that makes it even more appealing to me. Uh, this opened up at three and a half and dropped to three. So Spurs have gone from three and a half to three uh, from a total standpoint here. Oh, that's the cash flow. Sorry. From a total standpoint here, we are dealing with a 238 uh, at Pinnacle and at Will Hill. Other books have 238 and a half. This is a 238. It opened up at 239. We have a one point drop. Then we get into the cash flow here, and we have 77% of the tickets and 84% of the cash on the Spurs. You know, that's an alarming amount of money for the line to go three and a half to three, which obviously makes me want to move on the Pistons. I mean, uh, clearly, obviously, that's what I would be thinking. 54% of the tickets are on the over, and we don't have any cash flow. Uh, we know that Cade Cunningham is out. Um, Morris is out. Stewart's a game time decision. Zach Collins is out for the Spurs. Let's set a quick table here and hand it over to Dutch. San Jose's won two of their past 30. As I said, Detroit won of their past 34. Spurs coming off their fifth straight loss, 117-115 at Cleveland on Sunday night. Pistons are on the second half of a back-to-back -back after losing 131-110 at home to the Kings last night. 
Uh, Cade Cunningham, uh, left knee strain. He's going to be reevaluated in seven to 10 days. So he's out for a while. Detroit went for 47 in the first quarter and still found a way to lose by a lopsided margin. Uh, they lose by 21. I mean, that's just unbelievable. And uh, Wemby leading the NBA in block shots at 3.3 per game. Remember, Dan Kelly gave out that future at 13 to 1 for him to lead the league in blocks, 13 to 1. And that went down to plus 380 or so uh, by the time we went to game one here. And uh, Wemby is on a minutes restriction. He's dealing with the ankle injury. So he's averaging 19.3 points, 10.1 boards, 2.8 assists, 1.2 steals. Phenomenal. Uh, he went for 24, 10, and 5 in 25 minutes in that game Sunday at Cleveland. So he's had a couple days off here. I'm interested in the Pistons. That's not being a profitable thing to say out loud. Take it away, Dutch Spurs Pistons. You're a good man, Jim. Hey, you're an even better friend, you know. Uh, you know, maybe this was more back in the day, but Jim's the guy you want to have around, definitely. He feel, I feel like you're definitely the man that's going to take one for the team, you know. Take one for the motherfucking team because you can make something out of nothing, God damn it. Oh, man. I tried to break this ugly-ass game down. Gave me a motherfucking headache. Gave me a motherfucking headache. Left, this, left the nasty taste in my mouth as soon as I started breaking this motherfucker down. Couldn't do it, Jim. Couldn't do it. Did every other game for you. Not this one. Too many fucking L's combined. You can get somewhat consistency out of this game. These teams are both complete fucking trash. So, I mean, that's it. I don't You know, under, someone said, uh, in North Linder said classic 90s game. Man, if it was classic 90s game, this would be a good game. I mean, this the only thing I can see maybe about the 90s is this game is going to be low scoring. I mean, I honestly think I don't. I ain't, I can't even go into it. Yeah, one eight hundred gambler, bro. I can't even do it. I can't even do it, Jim. Uh, good luck if you take the Pistons, but we got nine other basketball games on the board, my friend, or eight, I believe. Yeah, I find the Pistons appealing here. Um, I don't know. It's you know. Uh, I know the games that you're gonna like when I break them down too. It's so funny. It's like we've been doing this now for a minute, so I already know. Yeah, I look. I find it appealing here. I w I, we'll see what else uh, is up, but I, f I I do find the Pistons coming right back to the floor. You know, getting some comfort. You know, now two straight games without Cade Cunningham. Uh, you know, we've been waiting for Killian Hayes and Jaden Ivey to show that you know, why they were lottery picks. It, that's not happened and, and maybe it'll never happen, but Earl sports bets on Pistons plus three and the money line. All right. Uh, okay. Well, get to though. I mean, that's a lot of points. It seems like for these two bummy ass teams, I can't do that. I can't have a bet on the total because we've seen the Jekyll and Hyde nature of, of both these teams, you know, the Pistons put up 47 and we had the breakdown here from, uh, from our guy North Ender, only team in the shot clock era since 1954-55 to have an 18-point lead after one quarter and end up losing by 18 plus. <laughs> That's it for the Pistons? Yeah, for the Pistons. There's no team <laughs> since 1954-55. Oh, man, the stats we throw out about this game have been so fucking disgusting. <laughs> you started off with the combined wins, and then that, holy shit. God damn. <laughs> Hey, yo, D says, will you answer the phone if we call 1-800-GAMBLER? Of course I will. Of course I will. Of course I will. All right, uh, let's roll on. Next up, 7 p.m. Eastern, Washington Wizards, 6 and 30. Here's another 3 and 17 on the road. I mean, we're talking about these crazy numbers. The Spurs are 3 and 15 on the road, and they're three-point favorites. Uh, Pacers, 21 and 15, 12 and 8 at home, where Cambridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, Indiana. Washington 0 and 5 over the past uh 101.2 possessions a game that's 13th the pacers still playing at the fast pace even without halley four and one over the past five 104.1 possessions a game let's take a look at the line history for wizards pacers here we have sitting here with indiana minus seven and a half at minus 112 uh, they opened up minus seven and a half minus 105 it's been seven cents of movement uh in their favor but it hasn't moved off of the number. From a total perspective, we have a 252. Uh, this opened up at 252. It got up to 253 and 253 and a half, and then it's come right back down to uh, where it started. From a cash flow perspective, 57% of tickets and 80% of cash on the over, and yet it's right back to where it started. And then from a spread, 
44% of the tickets and 59% of the cash on the Wizards. Wizards coming off their fifth straight loss, 136-128 at home to the Thunder on Monday night. Uh, Jordan Poole, 15 of his 24 points in the third quarter versus the Thunder. When I, I, I dislike him more and more, I think, every time I hear him talk. And, and when he was talking about uh, why he had a good game, it, it totally brought me back from Hito Turkoglu when, we, when he was interviewed, why he had a good game. He, said, he would just say, ball. <laughs> he just stared at the report and said, ball. And it pool reminds me of that. He just reminds me. It's like, oh, I finally got the ball was finally in my hands. Shut right. up. Uh, Kyle Kuzma, uh, 22 points, 15 boards, five assists on Monday. And I despise Hito Turkoglu. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I despise him. Uh, uh, but he just said, you know, to this, to a woman who's trying to do her job, he said, ball. And he just <laughs> stared at her. Uh, Pacers coming off their seventh win in eight games, 133, 131 at home over the Celtics on Monday. It seems like, you know, in NBA, we watch these teams step up without their star. And they just stepped up in the biggest way against the Celtics. A Matherin, uh, 8 of 15 from the floor, 5 of 9 for 3 for 26 points, hits the winning free throws with 0.6 left. And Naismith, 17 points, Turner, 16, Buddy, 15. And it just feels like this would be a letdown spot, but you'd have to bet the Wizards if you want to do that. And that's not very... Uh, enjoyable. Take it away for us here. I'm certainly leaning Wizards. Yeah, man. But I don't know. Let's hear what Dutch has to say. Wizards, Pacers, take it away. Uh, shout out to our guy, Jay Peasy, in the building like an Ivy with the three-pointers. Uh, shout out to White Time. I see you, my dude. Um, yeah, man. You, I knew you were going to like the Wizards, Jim. I knew you were going to like them. And low-key, <laughs> I, I, I kind of like them, man. It's hard to say that shit. But I, I do. I kind of like the Wizards, but I don't have to go to the motherfucker. I don't have to bet this game, but uh, I, I think the seven and a half might be, be too much. I mean, you just said it. You could say, oh, they're going to step up with, without Howley. Um, they did. I mean, they played that whole se- They played that whole second half, and they took a punch. They took one, two, three punches from the Boston Celtics. Um, JB, especially. You know what I mean? KP had some plays, but JB was doing his goddamn thing. Um, actually, probably should have won the game, as we already talked about with the foul. Um so uh, you know, I think I, I think it was a huge, huge win for the Pacers. Um, you know, beating the Celtics, who just beat them by 17 two nights before. Um, really big, big brother, little brother type shit to the Indiana Pacers. So that was a big win for them. Then you lose your star. Um, you know, he's uh, luckily only going to be out a couple weeks. It looks like look like it's going to be a lot worse. So shout out to Halley. Um, hopefully, we see him back soon. I mean, the kid's a stud. Uh, you know, the Pacers lost by 14 to the Wizards. Um, December 15th, 14 point basketball game. That was a couple games after um, the IT tournament, you know, the in season tournament. Um, we knew the Pacers were a tired basketball ga- team and they lost by 14 to the Washington Wizards. Now, prior to that, October 25th in Indiana, they did beat these boys by 23 points. Um, Indiana's back to playing good basketball, had a little bit of a hiccup. They're seven and one straight up last eight, seven and one against the number in those games. And on the other side of the ball, I mean, it's why it's hard to go to the window with the Wizards. I mean, they're one and nine straight up last nine on the road. They're three and six against the number last nine overall. I don't like any of their players, to be quite fucking honest with you. I don't like Jordan Poole. I mean, say what you will about Draymond Green. Uh, but goddamn, you can see why the motherfucker knocked his ass out. I mean, this guy, I mean, you want to smack this motherfucker and you ain't even in the same room with him when you're watching this dude play basketball. And then you can say the same thing about Kyle Kuzma. I mean, they're fucking clowns, the Washington Wizards. So, I mean, if it was for Prairie Play, sure, the Washington Wizards. But I can't go to the window with my with my money with the Washington Wizards. But I do believe they are the right side in this game. TJ McCollum going to be the starting point guard. He's going to get his minutes. He's going to run the show. It's a drop-off from for sure from Halley, but it's not, you know, as much as a drop-off as you guys probably would think, but it's going to affect the bench. And I just believe after a big win against the Celtics, um, somewhat of a little bit of a letdown spot here for the Wizards, and they can play in this basketball game. Has to be a letdown spot, and but this is what got me in trouble on Friday. I, you know, having a good season, got a little overconfident, and I was doubling up on these spots on Friday. I would love to bet first quarter, first half here I mean, on yeah, the Wizards. Had a good read on the Wizards with early. I was just going to say that. So. But I, I just, I have, and I, maybe I, I guess what I, I shouldn't let the bad Friday 
get in my head, but it is. I don't want to double up on these bad basketball teams. You want but early? I want. I would prefer early because I, I like the seven and a half. Don't get me wrong, but I would prefer early. I would prefer yeah. the Pacers <laughs> not to be as focused here. One thing that happens when you don't have your star player is you are just a little bit more locked in. But how could you be after beating the Celtics without your star player? Uh, so, and then I, I see the first quarter. There's Julian Cesario in the house. Great to see you, Julian. I saw Lucky Lefty on the Wiz first quarter minus one and a half at, at plus 200. Okay, I, yeah. I'm going to have something on the Wizards. I, I'm i just going to do whatever I can to not double. I feel like sometimes I get lazy. And I'm just like, you know what? I'll just take them both. And then I'm doubling up on a, a team that's 6-30 and 30 and 3-17 and 17 on the road. I would really like to not do that, but... I'm going to have either first quarter or first half or both at this point. Let's roll on. We roll on to 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Philadelphia 76ers, 23 and 12, 10 and 6 on the road at the Atlanta Hawks, 14 and 21, 5 and 9 at home. We're at State Farm Arena in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta playing at a fast pace, 103.54 possessions a game over their past five. They're 2 and 3 over that stretch. That's the second fastest in the league. Philadelphia 2 and 3 playing at the pace of 98.80 possessions a game. That's 18th in the league. And, of course, uh, Philly uh, beat up right now. Uh, Embiid out, Covington out, Melton game time decision, which they have Harris back here. So Harris uh, expected to play. We'll go over more of that. But uh, Harris has the ankle injury, and Melton has back soreness. Uh, Firkin Korkmaz is sick. Uh, they all came back to practice this week. Uh, so that's helpful, uh, obviously, because the Sixers haven't played since Saturday night, uh, third right. loss in four games. So let's get into the line history here for this spot. On the spread, we have Philly minus one and minus 105. So uh, Philly has gone from dog to favorite, plus two and a half, all the way to minus one. Now, you can still probably find them plus money. I mean, this is pinnacle that's moving the market here. But that's a big move uh, towards the Sixers. From a total standpoint, we're dealing with a 244. This opened up at 244. And got all the way up to 246 and a half before there was buyback right back to where we started at 244. So let's get into the cash flow here. Uh, we have uh, Hawks, just the underachieving Hawks. Uh, you know, any person who coaches this basketball team is, is you're just saying, well, how long is this guy going to last? You know, what, 18 months? Right. Uh, it's, it just seems like. And then in, when you have a team that can't win despite who's coaching and who's around, then you have to look at the star player and say, maybe that's the problem. But that's another conversation. Trey ain't the way, bro. Trey's not the way. Well, we th I was worried. I'm, I'm still, I was still a little concerned that he comes up to Toronto. But at this point now, we've come to the spot where if there's 3 or 4% of the players in the league that actually want to play in Toronto, then we have to focus with that tiny pool. Uh, you know, but... Right. Okay, and if he went to Toronto, he's not the best player. Scotty Barnes is. Oh, wait, Trey Young is nice if he's your two or three. You know, three. You got it. But he's got to realize you ain't the man, bro. Scotty, you go to Toronto, Scotty Barnes going to be the man. Ask Starko. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, Scotty is so important to everything that we do up here. 26% of the tickets and 23% of the cash on the Sixers, and the line is moving towards them. I mean, how do you not bet them? I mean, how do you not trust this market here? Uh, they're barely anybody betting them, and they go from dog to favorite. Thirty-eight percent of the tickets and seventy-seven percent of cash on the over, and they went up, and it's come down. How in the world top sets on Philly money line? How in the world? Uh, oh, look at that! Bo Jackson suspended by FanDuel. Uh, respect. Um, Bo Jackson said, "I guess the average person loses more than they win." The the information that we've got right now is that zero point eight percent of accounts are profitable. 99.2% of accounts are uh, in the red. That's the information that we've received. I, 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 I don't know if that's facts, but it's not too big of a stretch. Uh, let's go here. So Embiid uh, missed Saturday's loss against the Jazz, swelling in his left knee, didn't practice Monday or Tuesday. Uh, and, and then this is Nick Nurse's um, – it's just like it's Kawhi 2.0. They ask him if they think Embiid's going to play, and he's like, you know, we, we hope so. 
He just <laughs> sounds like a like a battered housewife. Uh, and Bean's missed eight games now this year. So the Hawks coming off their second straight loss, 117-110 in overtime in Orlando on Sunday. Uh, Trey Young coming off his 16th 30-point game of the year. And this begins a five-game homestand. They're 5-9 and nine at home. This gives us a great opportunity when we have a stretch like this with a team that's underachieving at home to see whether are they going to turn it around? Can we get a little bit ahead of the market in these first few games? But here I think it's pretty clear that the Sixers should be bet. Let's hear what Dutch has to say. Take it away, 76ers Hawks. Yeah, man. I mean, the Sixers are nothing for me, Jim, here. Um, you find you find the Sixers here in a good, uh, you know, in a spot where they've lost back-to-back games by 20-plus. All right, this is a good basketball team that hasn't done it. Um, they've won five straight meetings against the Atlanta Hawks. Um, this year, they've won two times already by double digits. Now, maybe that says pump your brakes a little bit. Um, they've already smacked them two times. And now maybe Atlanta could take advantage of them without Embiid being at home. Um, but Atlanta did just ain't it. If you like Atlanta, I think you got to look Atlanta early because we've seen Philly t- flip the switch and we've seen Atlanta get out to big leads and uh, real gigantic leads and give them away, you know, um, numerous times, especially at the crib. So um, in this basketball game, I honestly wanted to look into it a little bit more, Jim, just to see exactly who's going to be playing for the Sixers. You did say uh, Harris would be back. I obviously knew Embiid would be out. Um, but when these two teams play, I mean, the, 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 there's levels, and the Sixers are clearly on another level. As I mentioned, they beat them both times by double digits. Um, and you got a, and you got a, a Sixers team that should be pretty upset after getting smacked around back-to-back. Um, so I would only look Philly here, but I, I do expect Atlanta to get out early. So, um, you know, this is one of these games that I'm going to be really excited to watch live on All About the Hoops tonight with the fellas right here on Puff Sports Radio. Check it out. Check it out. 715 Eastern Time. Um, I believe it'll be a really good game to bet live because I could see Atlanta getting up by 14 real easy and the Sixers doing what they do and come back and Atlanta doing what they do, give the goddamn game away. So um, better line maybe to be added here late. But you can't be mad at asking the Sixers just to win the basketball game. And um, obviously the money, um, what you brought up, Jim, does does um, lead me to the Sixers as well. So it makes me more confident in the play. Um, but I think I'll just wait and uh, watch this game. Because I, I, the way when I break this game down, I see Atlanta being up at the end of one and at the end uh, of two. I mean, is it as simple as this? The Sixers, even without Embiid, are more than the sum of their parts. The Hawks are less. Than the sum of their parts. It's that simple. Like it doesn't, you know, yeah, you're taking out Embiid and stuff like that, but we know that the Sixers, you know, play well together, they fight for each other, and that they should be bet here. Yeah, I mean, they're a better basketball team. They've got a better bench. I mean, you still got Maxi out there, you still got Tobias. So uh yeah. I mean, maybe it is that simple. And we have the Sixers off of rest, uh, off of two, a loss. Two double of- digit, like 20 point losses, two straight. Yeah. Uh, It looks like Sixers are going to be on my card. I expect them to be on my card. We're going to go over everything here at the end, but this is just going to move on. I just didn't like the way they looked against Utah. Maybe that's why I'm so hesitant. You know, they, I mean, after getting smacked by the Knickerbockers like that, you, you come back and play like that against Utah. I don't know, but I mean, now is the time. Atlanta's, Utah's playing good basketball. (laughs) I will say that, but that wasn't even a basketball game. Okay, well, I, my card's forming here, which is good because hockey's a pretty ugly card. Looks like I'm moving on that final game. And it looks like I only have two spots in college basketball. So my whole night rides on NBA here with Dutch Boy Fresh. And I've been very successful on these Wednesdays uh, hearing Dutch's breakdowns and going over the market with you guys. So let's keep rolling. Next up, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And our guy, BJ. Uh, has given us his best bet. And we know what he's been doing with these best bets. It's Thunder money line for BJ. Oklahoma City Thunder 24 and 11, 10, 6 on the road. Miami Heat 21, 15, 10, 6 at home. OKC 3 and 2 over the past five, playing the pace of 102.30 possessions a game. Miami 2 and 3, uh, 98.8 possessions a game, 18th in the NBA. Yeah, Bo, I hate hearing that, man. Um, it's um, sucks. But uh, the, old, the best bonus link we have. For us, uh, a pub is the 100%, but it's only for new accounts at Bet Online. But the, it doesn't have to be Bitcoin. 100% up to $1,000 is the best uh, 
the best one that we have. My bookie's got a pretty good one. Uh, yeah, yeah, too, but, uh, Bet online's the best one we have, and and Bet online's what we're all going to be using in Texas, right? Uh, so let's roll into this one. Thunder on the road at the Heat. Right now, Heat plus four and a half. Uh, they opened up at four, now four and a half, a half point move uh, towards the OKC Thunder. From a total side of things, we're dealing with a 233 and a half. This opened up at 234, got up to 235 and then dropped. Cash flow wise, we are sitting here with 79% of the tickets, 96% of the cash on the over. And then 60% of tickets, 62% of cash on the Thunder. So the half point move, that all makes sense. Thunder snapped their two-game losing streak with a 136-128 win at Washington on Monday night. And this is game one of a back-to-back. -back. They go home. They host the Blazers tomorrow night. A tricky situation. And this team's shooting really well. Um, uh, right now, since Christmas, uh, they've shot better than 50% from the field in every game. Uh, they're shooting 54.9% from the field over their last eight games. They lead the league. He come in off their second win in three games, 121-13 at home versus the Rockets on Monday night. Uh, Kyle Lowry sprained left hand, uh, but it's his sickness. He's sick. That's why he's not playing. He didn't practice today because of sickness. It'll be the fifth straight game without Jimmy Butler. And just to get a little um, update on the situation, uh, Butler out. They still have Lowry as a game-time decision, but as of yesterday, the sickness was expected to keep him out, and Martin also a game-time decision, and it's just Bertan's uh, game-time decision for the Thunder. Take it away. You have a great read on the Thunder, and we've already heard that BJ is on the money line. Floor is yours. Can't wait to hear your breakdown. Yeah, man. I like the Thunder here. Got it at four. Uh, we'll make we'll make the best number official here, Jim. I like this look. Um, I Man, I, 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 Miami is gritty. They are gritty. You know, Spo just got paid. Salute to Spo, best coach going week in the NBA. You know, and he's gonna be around for an awful lot. Yeah, was, Jesus, he got, eight year, one hundred and twenty milli. Yeah, he Good got the bag, bro. He, and he's still not making as much as Popovich. Is that is that insane? You know, he's still not making as much as Popovich. Yeah, but, the term term and where's Popovich going to be in eight years? And no, yeah, for sure. In the long run, he's gonna be making. But I was seeing yearly, he's making nineteen, which is still. A little bit shy than uh, Popovich, I see. Yeah. That's crazy. So that's wild. Oh, oh Greg's losing a, a lot of bucket basketball games to be making that type of money. Uh, but we know what they're doing there. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I look at I look at this Heat team. You know, they're achieving a lot without Jimmy Butler. You know, Bam's playing out of his mind. Hero's doing what he's doing. And this kid, you know, Yami from UCLA, the rookie. You know, clearly, clearly one of the better rookies in the draft. Spo did it again. The um, people. And the Heat organization hit it hit home on another late pick. Um, but let's talk about the best pick going right now. Because, you know, you could say Wimby. You could talk Wimby. But if you're watching basketball, Chet Holmgren is the best rookie out there going. I know he didn't. I know it's his second year. But this motherfucker didn't play last year. So if anybody's getting a rookie of the year award, it's going to be Chet Holmgren. Um, guy's got an engine up and down, up and down as he goes. So consistent. I mean, he, he's shooting lights out from the perimeter. He's consistently move, uh, you know, moving his feet on the defensive end. Um, I just like what I see out of this kid. I like everything I see out of OKC, to be quite honest with you. Um, they got a bench. They got young cats. Um, they're deep. Um, say what you will about Giddy. You know, I'm not the highest on him, to be quite honest with you. I, he, sometimes he looks like he's playing a fucking quicksand, uh, you know, in the mud and shit. He's so slow out there. Um, but if he can knock down the, the, a consistent perimeter shot, He's okay because he doesn't. He does see the f floor pretty well um, as a point guard. He has pretty good vision. Um, but obviously, when we're talking OKC, we can't leave out Shea Alexander. I mean, outside of Luca, to me, he's the best thing going right now in the NBA. Um, he's so prolific. I mean, he's he gets to the hole at will. Gets can get contact when he needs to. Um, got the mid range game. Um, he's just really really nice, man. So um, I think he'll be the best player on the court clearly tonight. I think Lou Dort um, will make life a little tougher, um, Tyler Hero. And I, I simply believe the Thunder are just too much for this Miami Heat basketball team. Now, they have lost six straight meetings to Miami, too. So um, they'll be looking to – they'll be looking – this young basketball team is going to be looking to finally beat Miami. They have covered in three straight meetings and five of the last six in Miami. They have covered. Um, and they've won nine out of the last 12 basketball games. We've got a good basketball team coming into South Beach, ready to handle business. And the Heat been somewhat suspect at the house this year against the number six and ten 
against the number at the house. Um, so I look for the Thunder to come in and actually blow these boys out, Jim. Uh, you know, it's a slow start there in Miami. The the crowd, um, see, you know, seems to show up late often. Um, you know, by the time the whole motherfucking arena gets full, um, this game might be over, in my opinion. So I'm not mad at the Thunder earlier often, but I think minus four is good money. And it looks like, according to my site, that Thunder minus four is still available. At Bookmaker at minus one ten. Uh, maybe Billy Frieder can double check if that is a stale line or not. But uh, that would be the loan minus four uh, right now is over at Bookmaker. All the other books have moved it to four and a half. No, Bet Chris. Well, Bet Chris and Bookmaker are the same one I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, let me know if that is a uh, legit uh, Billy, my man. Okay. Uh, Thunder minus four at minus one ten for Dutch. Dutch, can I ask you just uh, generally speaking, first game of a back to back? Does that concern you at all? Do, do you feel like the rotations are um, that you know no one's going to play too much and that might uh, hurt you in the long run? Do you have any concern of the first half of a back to back? No, I think they. I mean, maybe in different circumstances, but I think they want to go there. And, and beat Miami. They haven't beat this team in six straight meetings. So I think they want to put it on. Obviously, you know, Spo just got all this money. Um, I, I think they're going to go in there ready to beat Miami Heat. You know, I, with or without Jimmy, I still think the Heat are a team that people uh, want to want to beat, um, especially a team like a young team like the Thunder who've lost six straight. And we're talking about the Portland Trailblazers tomorrow night. So, I mean, the Shea wants to take the night off. Chet Holmgren wants to take the night off tomorrow night. Um, they still handle business in Oklahoma. So I don't think they're too worried about the Blazers right now. The Thunder minus four, minus 110, and BJ's best bet on the Thunder money line. Uh, the juice, if if that book it didn't give you back the cash after kicking you out, uh, it, it's there's a couple things we can do to get to at least put some pressure on them to, to do that. So if that's the case, if they did not give you your cash after they kicked you out, and I said, couldn't even log in, deactivated account, made a deposit the week before. So I had, oh, you had to dispute it with your credit card. If you're on Twitter, uh, and if anybody gets screwed over like that by a book, there are some things we can do. Uh, so, not, and I don't mean getting kicked out. That's just the nature of this business, which makes it so difficult when you when you get kicked out. But if, but if, if, they have, if there's a money, it's a fraudulent situation, just get to me on Twitter and there's some things we can do to force their hand. But uh, it takes a long time. But there are things you can do. So please do that if, if that ever happens. Let's move on. 8 p.m. Eastern. Houston Rockets 18 and 17, 3 and 11 on the road. At the Chicago Bulls 17 and 21, 12 and 9 at home right. United Center in Chicago, Illinois. Houston 3 and 2 over their past five, playing a pace 100.6 possessions a game. Yeah, there's some spots we can report it to, DeJuice. There, there, there has been some work in that end in the industry. Uh, so uh, hit me up. Uh, hit me up. Uh, Chicago 3 and 2, 95.12 possessions a game. That's last in the NBA over that stretch. Let's get into uh, I'm just at Jimmy the Bag, the juice at Jimmy the Bag. So I'll follow you back and then we'll do it on DM so it doesn't need to be public. Uh, let's go here for this spot. Houston, Chicago. All right, let's roll. Right now, Houston, three and a half point dogs at most books. Uh, over at Pinnacle, though, they've moved to four. So there has been a move towards these bulls. Opened up at three and a half, uh, closing here at four. Uh, at first, when it moved to four, this was a no vig situation. It's now a complete pick them at four. So it's a legit half point move uh, towards these Chicago Bulls. From a total scenario, we're dealing with a 216 and a half. Uh, this opened up at 215 and a half, and it got all the way up uh, to 218. Before there was buyback, and now it's just a one point move. So we have a half point move to the Bulls, a one point move to the over. Let's get into the um, cash flow here 53% of the tickets and 94% of the cash on the Bulls. Now, there's just 5,910 uh, tickets in, so we don't need to get too caught up in that. But the market's moved a half point towards the Bulls. 22% of the tickets are on the under, uh, more on the over, but we've had the uh, market move there. So here we go. Uh, Rockets coming off their second loss in three games, 121-13 of the Heat on Monday night. Van Fleet led all scores with 32 points. Uh, he looked good. Sengun just rolling right now, 22 points and 11 boards. Dylan Brooks has missed seven straight games now with a strained right oblique. And this will be game two of a six-game road trip uh, for all of us to keep an eye on how Houston handles this road trip. As we know, this is a squad that's 3-11 on the road. 
So uh, Brooks out, Eason out, and then for Chicago, Caruso and Levine, game time decisions, and Craig out. Uh, Bulls coming off their second straight win, 119-112 in overtime with the Hornets on Monday. Kobe White went for 27, six boards. Andre Drummond, 21 and 15. Vooch, 21 and 10. Vooch and Levine are still coming off the bench. They're on min minutes restrictions. Uh, and Drummond, double-digit rebounds in seven straight games, and he's averaging 17.4 boards over that span i've never seen anybody with numbers that look so good but if you watch them play it looks so bad take <laughs> it away for us dutch rockets bulls <laughs> it's on train drumming for you it's like damn how does my bike get so many rebounds it's just oh. oh man just yeah it's crazy man i don't know uh, i don't really like this game i thought i would like the bulls maybe i should like the bulls but i looked at it a lot yesterday quickly i thought i was gonna be on the bulls and when i actually broke it down i'm just like this this could be a tire basketball team um and they're losing and you know bringing levine back in the mix you know they weren't playing too good of basketball when he was out there but they have been playing pretty basketball pretty good basketball of late um they are four and one last five as a favorite uh five and two against the number last seven at the house um and 14 and five against the number last 19 overall 14 and five Against the number last 19 basketball games for the Chicago Bulls. So um, I wouldn't be on the Rockets here. I'll tell you that right now. Um, you know, the Houston Rockets um, can't win on the road, man. Three and 11, as our boy Jim said, straight up last 14 on the road or this season on the road. So um, we talked about it. Houston's came back to reality a little bit at the crib, but there have been a bet on basketball team um, at the house and you fade them on the road. Um, so I don't, I'm not going to go and bet. Um, you know, the Houston Rockets in this situation, I just don't really see it. They're two and four against the number last six against the Chicago Bulls. Um, and I do think the Bulls, you know, are playing better basketball. I just, just don't really like them too much, um, quite honestly, to put my money on them. But I do believe they're probably the side. From what you broke down there, Jim, it does make me sound like the Bulls are the side or make it sound like the Bulls are the side as well. So um, Wine Time said the Bulls are on his card. You know, check it out. I guess uh, the Bulls are the right side, but I just can't go to the window with it. Shout out to our guy, Billy Briz. You know, the Billy. Um, no, uh, hopefully he's not rocking his new outfit. Yeah, his, uh, his belly button shirt. Is that what we call it? Um, <laughs> Rock top hoodie, some fucking. <laughs> my butt came on the set. <laughs> He gave a great breakdown and then did some some weirdo shit. Yeah, no, it's wild. He comes on with his crop top and the the vibe on the show, you know, skyrockets. Laughs go up, but the numbers start dropping while that's happening. <laughs> so it's like, uh, what do you want? Do you yeah, want more people laughing? Or do you want more laughs on camera? It's a wild balance. No, we're not laughing with you, homie. You know, a lot of respect for Billy. A lot of respect for Billy. But a little bit went out the motherfucking window when I seen that shit, goddammit. Mm -hmm. Nah. Uh, but yeah, shout out to our boy. Check him out. He'll be uh live. And do not bring that shit to all about the hoops. We grown. Do not bring that shit to all about the hoops tonight, Billy. Please. And do don't not. bring it to San Antonio either. <laughs> uh, bulls. I want the Bulls. I, I want the Bulls here. The bulls, yeah, I want yeah. the Bulls here. I, I think the Bulls I are right. You know, one thing that's happened for Vooch is he goes out and sees Drummond putting up better numbers than him. It's got a light of fire. It's got to light a fire for Vooch. And then I don't, couldn't care less about Zach Levine. I just, I don't care. Um, I don't yeah, care. I think all. the Bulls and, are the right side. Like, I might be overthinking it because when I looked at it yesterday, I was like, oh, I'll be on the Bulls. And then the line's clearly stating in the movement and stating that the Bulls are the right side. So maybe I'll get there. Well, let's talk about the next spot on the board. 8.30 p.m. Eastern, New Orleans Pelicans, 22 and 15, 10, 7 on the road. Golden State Warriors, 17, 19, 11, 10 at home. Chase Center in San Francisco, California. I love the feeling when the card starts coming together. You're like, oh, man, tonight's going right. to be fun. Uh, it's going to be fun. But this is a great game. Pelicans, Warriors at the Chase Center in San Francisco, California. Pelicans 4-1 and one over their past five, playing second slowest pace in the NBA, 95.3 possessions a game. Warriors 2-3, and three, playing at the pace, 98.4 possessions a game. Quickly need to see... Uh, this spot with Zion here. He's game time decision. Uh, let me see if I can get a refresh on that. Uh, no, no change there. Game time decision. Uh, Draymond Green practicing, uh, not going to play tonight. And of course, Chris Paul and uh, Gary Payton out for these Warriors. Let's get into the line history here. Pelicans Warriors. This total is sitting at 234. It opened up 
at 233 and a half, got up to 234, half point move to the over. Let's get into the spread here for this one. Sitting here with the Warriors at plus two at minus 103. They opened up at plus one. There's been a one point move towards the Pelicanos. Uh, cash wise, here we have on the total no money information, and it's pretty much 50 50 on the tickets. On the spread, 95% of the tickets and 98% of the cash. On the Pelicans. And they come in off that 133-100 victory at Sacramento on Sunday to start a five-game road trip. I can't help but think that the last thing a coach wants is you start your five-game road trip, you look phenomenal, and then you have two days off, and you have to be worried about the squad staying focused here, you know, McCollum went for 30. The Pelicans shot 61% from the field. They did it without Zion. Who's questionable here. They played incredibly almost perfect basketball. And then they had two days off. They obviously go out, you know, uh, question. I, I, Obviously, you can tell that I would like to find a way to get on the Warriors. I don't know if I can. They come in off their second loss in three games, 133-118 at home versus the Raptors on Sunday. They've lost four of six on this homestand that ends here. So you have to think that the, the they have to play better here, but you want this team without Draymond Green or Chris Paul on the floor. Uh, Warriors also destroyed New Orleans, 130-102 in New Orleans back on October 30th. I wish that didn't happen. I guess when it's all said and done, I'm going to have to um, stay off. Ron Crawford says, Golden State not losing on national TV after getting smacked. Uh, Billy Briz saying Steve Kerr doesn't know what to do with the rotations. Uh, very, very, very interesting. I can't wait to hear your breakdown. This is a really good game tonight. Pelicans Warriors. Yeah, man. Uh, I like the Pelicanos here. I like them early. I expect them to handle business, but lock, uh, lock me in on the first half. I mean, the first half is just good money, man. It's, it's what it is. They're the number one first half team in the goddamn league, and they've been covering um, an awful lot in the first half of late. And we know the Warriors um, have a tendency to start off slow. But you talked about it, Jim. You lose by 28 points to these motherfuckers uh, on your home court, you know? On your home court, 28-point blowout to Golden State Warriors. And we know the Warriors are the Warriors, so I don't think the Pelicanos are going to be overlooking them by any means. They're, uh, you know, they have covered in three straight basketball games on the road. And have won six straight on the road, um, the Pelicanos. And five out of the last six overall. The Warriors are struggling to figure it out. Steph Curry, not looking like the chef right now. He's looking like the prepper. All right? He's not He's not really looking like what we where we came to see of, of Steph motherfucking Curry. So uh, two and four against the number last six overall for the Warriors. And they've lost five out of the last seven basketball games, Jim. Uh, I, I, look, I look for the uh, Warriors. To lose this basketball game, to be quite honest with you, they're trying to get it right now. They got Draymond coming back, he's saying all the right things, acting like, Bro, I, I don't know what the fuck's going on in Golden State, you know, like this shit. Like, it, it's funny to me. Like, I almost retired out of Silver Save Me. Like, and now this is like, you, you ain't, I don't even know. It probably, I don't, he's definitely not going to save the day, and he's more of a distraction than anything right now. So, um, the Warriors need to move on from Chris Paul, they need to move on from Andrew Wiggins, and they need to move on. From Draymond motherfucking Green. Believe that. Believe that. So once that happens, then maybe we can start betting on the Golden State Warriors. Until then, it's Pelicanos. And I look to fade the Warriors um, at, at pretty much against any team that that's that's de anywhere decent. I mean, they're just not a good basketball team right now, Jim. They're trying to figure it out. And listening to Steve Kerr in his press conferences, that motherfucker look like he needs a, a, a therapist. Like, he does not look um, – too happy and he's like god i got draymond coming back this shit ain't getting any easier that's the, really the way he looks um i don't expect anything different i expect uh you know the words to continue um to not look to look clay's a shell of himself and we're starting to see that out of steph a little bit which is crazy because that's coming a lot sooner than i think we all expected and i'm not saying he's done i'm just saying like he, he's not looking like the stuff curry we've come to see no, I, I I hear that from an X's no standpoint, without a doubt. If the Warriors hadn't have destroyed the Pelicans already this year, I would be on them. 
I, I just think this is kind of a shady spot for the Pelicans. Uh, BJ saying, got to pump the brakes. This is a competitive line. The books are hanging, which tells me the Warriors are live, even with the injuries. It looks too easy to bet the Pels, but he didn't touch it. Public will be on the Pels heavy. They are on the Pels heavy. Uh, and Jay's final take saying, too easy to take the Pels. But, uh, you know, Billy Briz saying, Pelicans first half is the most profitable angle. And you got a really, really nice line at Pinnacle. Uh, you can get them the Pelicans minus a half at minus 107. Or just on the money line to keep the push in at minus one eighteen. What would you prefer? Let's get the uh, let's get the half. They're gonna be up at this. I, mean, I still think people don't. People still. What's the number you said publicly right now, uh, Jim, on the spread or this game? Well, there's it's at two, but ninety five percent of the tickets and ninety eight percent of the cash are on the Pelicans. I don't know. That's that can't be correct. Is that really correct? It, yeah, it can be. It can be just because we're talking about seven thousand tickets. So yeah. we're, we're talking about what, like percent, five percent of what the tickets are going to be in. So it's 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 possible at this point. I mean, it's going to change, you know, throughout the day. I don't like hearing that, but I'm going to stick with the first half. I think the Pelicanos are just are just a better basketball team with or without Zion. To be quite honest with you, um, the Warriors do not look good. All right, Dutch is locked in. Pelicans first half minus a half. Two games left on today's show. Let's get into them. Late night action for us. Denver Nuggets 26 and 12, 11 and 8 on the road at the Utah Jazz. Now 18 and 20 and 11 and 5 at home. Delta Center in Salt Lake City. Denver 3 and 2 over their past five, playing the pace 98.1 possessions a game. Utah 4 and 1, playing the pace of 103.15 possessions a game. We have for Utah a healthy group. And that's why the change has happened uh, for Denver. They're pretty healthy themselves right now. Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. We'll start with the spread from us. Oh, let me get off uh, first half and move to full game from a spread scenario. We have Utah at plus seven. Uh, they opened up at six and a half. So there's been a half point move uh, towards these Denver Nuggets. It came back to six and a half. It moved to seven about 37 minutes ago. So it's come back and forth, six and a half, seven, six and a half, seven. So there's been a half point move towards these nuggets. From a total scenario, we are looking at a, uh, you know, in the 238 range. Pinnacles dropped it to 237 and a half. This opened up at 238, dropped to 237, got back to all the way up to 239. So had a point and a half drop this morning, but it's only dropped a half point since the opening line. Take a look at the cash flow here for the second to last game on the card. 80% of the tickets and 99% of the cash on the Jazz. 80 and 99. And this line has moved towards the Nuggets. 20% of the tickets and 1% of the cash uh, at this point on your defending NBA championship champions. 36% of the tickets, 90% of cash on the under. Obviously, that's confusing uh, market information. Nuggets coming off their third win in four games, 131-114 at home versus the Pistons on Sunday. Jamal Murray led with 37, 14 and 24 shooting. He scored 20 or more in four straight and 10 of his past 11, averaging 23.7 points per game over his last 11. Jokic, four points, seven boards and 16 assists and five blocks. I just, I love the way this guy plays. He just doesn't care what anybody says or thinks. You know, he just Dude, goes out and does whatever he goddamn well pleases, tries as hard as he wants to try, and delivers. The Jazz come in off their fifth win in six games, 132-116 at Milwaukee on Monday. It's got to feel like a spot where they could, you know, the, the part of the thing that Jokic doesn't care, Jokic doesn't care. The Nuggets don't care that the Jazz feel good about themselves. It's not they're like, oh, we got to shut this Jazz team down. I mean, no. They don't care. They know that they're the best team in the league. Market in 21 and 14. Clarkson 21. And then Sexton, Collins, and George all go for 19 each. And Chris Dunn puts up 13 assists. Chris Dunn? Flashbacks from I, when he had potential. I didn't know he was still in the league. <laughs> yeah, man. It's flashbacks. Take it away for us here, Dutch Nuggets Jazz. Yeah, man. Hey, I'm not going to lie. I don't like that shit you was talking about. All the, the, just don't even 98, 99. But God damn it. Fuck. Utah Jazz are the motherfucking play. Take note. God damn it. Take note. Because they are. We talked an awful lot about the Pelicanos first half and how profitable it was. Well, you know what's more profitable than the Pelicanos first half? It's the Utah motherfucking Jazz at the crib. God damn. They're good money at the house. Our boy Ron Crawford coming through with the 9-3 as a home dog. 
I mean, they th they just are good money at the crib, man. They're the number one team, uh, profitable team pro uh, at the house against the spread, the Utah Jazz. Um, and they're playing good basketball. Won five out of the last six. Um, they're healthy. You could say, oh, they just had a long road trip. Um, they're deep, though. You, you've seen the names Jimmy just uh, rang off. They're deep. They got they got, they can run. They're damn near 11-12 out there if they needed to. Um, they got a deep basketball team. They will give up a lot of points. But they got guys that can put the ball in the bucket. Believe it. Um, they they five out of the last six, as I mentioned, wins against Philly, wins against the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, they are three and zero ATS last three meetings versus the Denver Nuggets. Five and zero straight up last five at the house as well as the Utah Jazz. Always, always going back to Carl Malone, Car, uh, John Stockton, Carl Malone days. Um, it's been hard to play in Utah, and they're starting to show it. They're starting to bring it back again. Uh, five and zero straight up last five meetings versus the Denver Nuggets. They play these champion boys pretty well in Utah, and that's uh, five and zero straight up last five in Utah against the Denver Nuggets, and eight and two against the spread last ten overall. The Utah Jazz. I mean, the numbers are good. You know, Joker's really nice. We know what you're going to get out of the Denver Nuggets, but this game is going to be a two possession basketball game. Come down to it, Utah will be in this game at the crib. You can go and give me six and a half, seven. Uh, it's good money, man. This team is playing some of the better basketball um, in the league in the past uh, two weeks. Dutch getting the Jazz plus seven at minus 106. Available right now at Pinnacle. Let's talk about the final spot on the board. Dan Kelly's already said that he'll be on R.J. Barrett's over points again. Cash plus money number last night in the third quarter. Raptors 15 and 21, 6 and 12 on the road. LA Clippers 23 and 13, 15 and 4 at home. We're at Crypto. Toronto 3 and 2 over their past five, playing the pace of 102.5 possessions a game. That's sixth fastest in the NBA. Clippers 4 and 1, 96 possessions a game. That's 27th fastest in the NBA. So let's take a look at the line history. Obviously, we have an angry Raptors squad. The difference in fouls last night in the fourth quarter was absolutely ludicrous. Clippers right now. Uh, open up as nine and a half point favorites and they move to 10 half point move towards the Clippers. Then from a total perspective, we're sitting here at a two thirty seven and a half. That's juiced to the under uh, this opened up at two thirty six and immediately dropped to two thirty five and a half. And then it's climbed. We get to the cash flow here for uh, this one. We have 64% of the tickets and 71% of cash on the under and on the spread. We have 49% of tickets and 76% of cash on the Clippers. Andrew G says Raptors cover this if they want to. Motivation after getting screwed over. Uh, well, Raptors, you know, lose 132, 131 last night. I had 23 free throws in the fourth quarter compared to the Raptors with two. I, somebody in the chat said there was 29 to two. Uh, wow. Bar Barnes went for 26, Siakam 25, Barrett and quickly 23 and 21. Uh, Pirtle uh, out for at least two weeks. So Thad Young's out there. I love Thad. He's young. I, I love him. I, he, he, he's such a vet out there. He plays with calm, passes the ball. He does the little things. But not having Pirtle out there is a loss. I mean, there's no way around it. Uh, the Raptors shot 56.4% from the floor. Uh, that's a really nice number. It's hard to believe you can lose in the NBA shooting 56.4 from the floor. They're 3-2 and two since Barrett and quickly arrived. And then this is game five of the road trip. So they head off to Utah. And it closes up on Friday. Uh, the Clippers bounce back from their 106-103 loss at home to the Lakers by beating up on the Suns 138-111 at home on Monday night. Paul George went for 25. And they shot 62.4% from the floor, 51.7% from three. This is their third game in four nights against the Raptors team on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. Pretty fascinating situation. Take it away for us here, Dutch Raptors Clippers. Yeah, man, I watched that game uh, incomplete last night. Was on the Raptors, my only play uh, on the board yesterday. Um, liked a lot, and a lot hit, but I only bet one fucking game yesterday. It was Toronto Raptors, and that shit was a nail biter. Um, frustrating with the foul calls at the end, but you know, um, the Lakers did. You know, you know what was frustrating also was the way AD was just punking their ass. I mean, they had absolutely nothing for AD. He made some big plays on Scotty at the end too. So. Um, big shout out to Anthony Davis. Say what you will about the foul calls, but um, he was a man of my boys um, last night, um, and I love what I see out of Scotty Barnes. Um, but he's he's still he, he's still you know a work in progress. 
Um, but the Raptors, man, they're a tired basketball team. They could come out with a little bit of energy tonight, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to wind down. I think the Clippers are just – are just going to be just a better basketball team at this point. I mean, I really think the Raptors are tired. I think I, I, what I could see is first quarter, maybe first half here. Um, I see a guy, Billy, liking the Clippers first at first quarter, so he's expecting them just to come out and put them away. I would expect maybe halftime for the Clippers to flip the switch. Um, I'm going to be off this game, Jim, but the way I looked at it was that the Raptors are going to get blown out the gym tonight. Um, I just felt like that was a super tough game against the Clippers. I mean, Lakers last night. Um, they they um, exerted an awful lot of energy, um, and they are a little bit deeper now. Um, but if I was looking at Toronto, I would look at Gary Trent Jr. three pointers. Um, I don't know if you could get that prop, but he's finding his jumper. He's getting an awful lot more comfortable. He hit three in the fourth uh, quarter last night. Um, his shot's looking a lot better. His shot from three is looking. He's looking like the Gary Trent when y'all made the trade for him. So. Um, looking for at props, Gary Trent three point prop is good money. Outside of that, I would look, uh, I would look Clippers full game here. I do expect four quarters, the Raptors t- legs to tire down. They've been on a long road trip. Yeah, I'm comfortable staying off of the spot here. Um, nothing for Gary Trent over at Pinnacle. Yeah, I didn't have anything on it when I seen it on my books yet, so. But I was watching the game last night, and I'm like, this kid's finding his his uh, he's finding his jumper again. You're right. Uh, he's such a streaky player, and he's clearly um, he's clearly finding it right now. And no, nothing at 365 either. So no Trent props. And they got a bunch of guys out there. So uh, nothing to juice. Couldn't find it here. So there you go. I'm gonna stay off of this spot uh, as well. So let's review all action in the NBA and. It's a pretty interesting card. You had uh, we had interest in Celtics early. I, I don't know if I'm going to get there, but I certainly have interest in them early. Uh, then nothing for Sacramento. Charlotte's too bad. I'm going to be on the Pistons. I'm going to be on the Pistons, and I got to figure out how to bet the Wizards, whether it be first quarter or or, or first half. I, I'm not going to bet both. And if, if I pick the wrong one, that's fine. I'm just I can't do that again. I'm going to be on the 76ers as well. Uh, then Dutch is on the Thunder minus four. BJ's best bet is on the Thunder. I'm going to be on the Chicago Bulls. That's my card. Those are my four spots. I got to keep it clean. I, I I can I know exactly what went wrong on Friday, and I just got overconfident. Dutch is on the Pelicans first half minus a half at minus 107. He's on the Jazz plus seven at minus 106. And then uh, Dan Kelly going to be on RJ Barrett's over points again. And that is our NBA breakdown for today. Wednesday, January 10th. The big story here is our uh, big show this evening, our big NBA live stream this evening starring Dutch and Dabby Cab. So that's all about the hoops. That's at 7.15 p.m. Eastern. Uh, join the squad. It comes right on the heels of last call. So please, uh, please join uh, the squad as we live bet away. And then we have our confidence pool uh, we have been given some notes from Dan Kelly, which we will then. Uh, so we'll reshoot uh, the uh, video to make it uh, clearer for everybody. But that pool, fifty dollar entry, uh, you got to get in by Friday at midnight. Jose and I are in. My mom's in. I'm not sure uh, who else is in, but I'll get all that information uh, for you guys. Uh, the the video not uh, not enjoyed by our Dan Kelly, and I don't even know if I can. Uh, yeah, it's not even here right now. Uh, upload. I thought it was uploaded, but maybe we pulled it. Uh, that is our NBA breakdowns for today. Dutch, go out there and kill it. Kill it on the live stream as well. Uh, thank you for rocking with us every Wednesday. We have these huge cards, and you attack them uh, with such skill and savvy. Uh, please, uh, any last words for the Capri Sport and the show? Yeah, I appreciate you, Jim, as always. Uh, man, check us out. Check us out. 7.15 Eastern time, as our boy Jim said it right there, all about the hoops. We'll have the whole crew. Uh, get Connor Mack involved in there too as well. One of the better uh, college basketball NBA cappers we got. Big card tonight. Uh, we will uh, find a bag, believe it. So we uh, we got some good games uh, pre-flop as well as you guys like to say. Um, so let's have a day, Jim. We need it. Let's get that cash. There he is, Dutch Boy Fresh. And now let's follow him on X at Dutch Boy Fresh.